everybody. Once again, I'm happy that you chose to join us for our Bible study on our Mount Sinai MBC of Memphis YouTube channel. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you, Father, for hearts and minds to study your word. We ask, as always, that you would open our hearts to receive your fresh. In Jesus' name, amen. So we continue with article number 13, a gospel church. And our author writes, we believe that a visible church of Christ is a congregation of baptized believers associated by covenant in the faith and fellowship of the gospel observing the ordinances of Christ governed by his laws and exercising the gifts, rights, and privileges invested in them by his word, that its only scriptural officers are bishops, pastors, deacons, whose qualifications, claims, and duties are defined in the epistles to Ty Timothy and to Titus. And so our scripture will continue to come from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, <coughs> excuse me, verses uh, 1 through 13. And today, we will once again read verses not, 7 through 9 of those uh, verses from the NIV. And it reads, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 7 through 9, Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. So we said last time that as believers in Christ, we are not sinless. Uh, we sin all the time, either through omission, commission, or intentional. But in Christ, we are blameless. No charge will be brought against us at Christ's coming because he took our blame upon himself on Calvary's cross. And so, because of that, his righteousness can be imputed or has been imputed to all who came to the Father in repentance through faith in Jesus Christ. Imputed means that it was just given to us. Um, he, he, it, it's just like you stamping the book and say, hey, righteousness. Um, it's not because of anything that we've done. It's not... Uh, we don't have righteousness on our own. It's because of what Christ has done. Romans 8 and 1 tells us, There is therefore now no condemnation, which means before Christ there was con condemnation. Before we accepted him, we were condemned already. But now, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So the key to us being presented blameless is our position in Christ. And the key to understanding the, the first nine verses of, of, of the first of this uh, chapter uh, is understanding our position and privilege in Christ. Remember, Paul starts off this letter not by attacking the problems of the Corinthians church, uh, and he very well could have, but he didn't tell them how messed up they were or how disappointed in them that he was. He, he didn't say, I spent all that time with y'all, and now, look, <laughs> this is what I get. He didn't say any of that. He started by stating how God sees them. And because they are believers, God sees them, uh, not the mess that they are, but he sees them as being in Christ. They are hidden in Christ. His blood is covering them and is covering us. When we believe in, in, in Christ, what he did for us on the cross, 
our position shifts from being in the sphere of the unbelieving world to the sphere of Christ. Because of our position, we are without condemnation. There are no charges against us. Paul asked the question in Romans 8 and 33. He says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? In other words, who will dare blame God's elect? Our position in Christ is secure. We don't need to fear the past. We don't need to fear, uh, oh, if I mess up really bad uh, in the future. And we don't need to fear the present. We, we don't need to fear like walk on uh, uh, pins and needles thinking that, oh, if I mess up, then Christ is not going to uh, save me anymore. No, we don't have to worry about that. We are not condemned. So often... We are ashamed of the things that we've done in, in the past and, and hoping that no one ever finds out. But we can be secure in knowing that God knows it all. He knows everything we've ever done. He knows everything we're doing right now. He knows everything we're going to do in the future. And yet his son chose to die for us. We are secure in the love of Christ. He is not going to find out something new, uh, some new thing about us and, and, and say, oh, no, 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 I can't have that. No, he's not going to do that. He's not going to write us all. Absolutely nothing is going to separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. In, in Romans 8 and 35, Paul again asks a question. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ Jesus? Then he points out some situations that under normal circumstances would most definitely separate us. He asks, shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Then in verse 38, it, it's as though he's given us his testimony. He says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can you imagine a person experiencing all of that? They, I mean, they would most definitely feel that God had forsaken them. I mean, we go through much less than that and, and oftentimes feel like uh, that God has forsaken us. When we are in the midst of troubles, so often our first thought is, why God? Or more specific, why me, God? It is especially during those times that we as believers must hold on to the word of God. God's word declares loud and clear that God does love us. He loves you and he loves me personally. There is absolutely, positively nothing, no matter how dark and depressing, no matter how severe, that thing cannot separate us from the love of Christ. No matter what our circumstances are, no matter what, where we find ourselves, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. I don't care how you're feeling. Circumstances are not evidence that God does not love us. God loves us no matter what the circumstances may be, no matter how we're feeling, no matter what we're thinking. God loves us. In this world, we are going to suffer. Being a Christian, uh, being in Christ Jesus does not mean that we're not going to suffer. He suffered. So therefore, if we are in Christ Jesus, we're going to suffer. But no matter the circumstances, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. He conquered death. Therefore, we can conquer anything. We cannot lose, no matter how it looks 
to the human eye. As the saying goes, we can't lose with the stuff we use. And, and, and 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 8 again, our verse, in the Amplified Version says, And he will establish you to the end, keep you steadfast, give you strength, and guarantee your vindication. He will be your warrant against all accusations or indictments so that you will be guiltless and irreproachable in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So strip down to bare bone. The basic fact is that all who are in Christ are blameless for the simple reason that they are in Christ. Their saving faith has placed them within a circle of uh, within the circle of Christ. And all who are in him, who are born again, regardless of how much they have grown spiritually or regardless of how much fruit bearing they have, have, have done, they, we are going to see the day of the Lord and are going to be in heaven with him eternally. It, it's the same as being heir to a fortune for no other reason than that that your birth that you were birthed into the family as believers we are all heirs of the kingdom of god not because of anything we've done but because of what christ did for us now the judgment of unbelievers decides their eternal punishment the judgment of believers will decide our eternal rewards, but rewards or lack thereof will not keep us out of heaven. Christ is coming back. The day of the Lord will happen. We don't know when, but we do know he is coming back. And the amazing thing is that me with my messed up self, you with your messed up self don't have to be afraid of his coming back. If we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, why? Because we are in Christ. And because we are in Christ, we will, he will present us to the Father as blameless. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will present us strong. And, and, and if he's keeping us strong to the end, he's not waiting until the end to make us strong. He's keeping us until we get to the end. He's keeping us all the way from the time we accept Christ until the time we are with him in heaven. He is keeping us. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And with that, that's it. I will see you next time. And until then, be blessed and come back and join us. Bye-bye.